Welcome back to part four of doing a flex connector with ArcSight. So um, just a quick recap. We've installed a connector. We've looked at the file in stage one. Uh, we've done the basic regex parsing of making sure everything's parsed around that one. And we've given them labels. Now we need to do some mapping with regards to this. Now, this is a little bit more fiddly, I will say, and I will admit. Uh, and it will potentially throw up some error messages around how I want to do some of the processing here as well. So don't be worried about the error messages that they throw up. They're typically uh, Java error messages and they're not particularly helpful. But I'll guide you as we go through those as I deliberately trip over a few things uh, as we go through that process. But just stepping back to these tokens for a second, you'll notice that by default it always sets these to be string uh, because that's the default type for a particular token. And in a lot of cases, this is as good as we need it to be. Now, remember things like card number. And this example is, is uh, three numbers, but there were some examples that had a, a text in there. So we'll probably keep that as a string type and the others will be string as well. However, the top one, which is the, the uh, timestamp, isn't going to be. So we need to change this. Now, again, it's documented in the documentation with regards to this, but we do need to set this as a timestamp. So the type is going to be timestamp. And we can just edit that in the actual field there. It's nice and simple, very straightforward to do that. We also need to dis define what that timestamp is. So we put in the various text for what the format is. Now, what we do have is a naming structure of how this works. So let me just flash up the documentation for a second just to detail this. So in the documentation, again, I thoroughly recommend reading this and going through this. Just on this token types for a second, there are different types in there. In this particular one, I, I set it to be timestamp because I want the date and time format. And there are describers of what that should be. So you can see how we're going to name things. Uh, you'll notice that it, the capitalization is critical. So D is not the same as capital D, for example. Uh, so we will actually describe that out as we're doing it. So if I jump back and just go through a quick example. So my format here is going to be, uh, if we look at the documentation again, if we want month, uh, so in this case, it will process it, whether it's July, Jul, or whatever. So we want capital M. So in this example, we want, there's three, so there's three. Uh, then there is an underscore character, which we do parse out. And then there is the uh, day in the month. So again, let's just double check the uh, day, uh, which is lowercase d. So there's only two of those, dd. Uh, and then there's a space, and then there's a uh, hour, which again, check in our documentation. Uh, if we go a little bit further, hour in the day is capital H, it's 24 hour, or hour in the day, which is lowercase h. Now, uh, I believe, because I've done some checking in this one, it's just lowercase, so it's hour, hour, uh, minute, minute, second second so that should be correct let's give it a go the way to do that is actually just save it and there we go it's actually saved that it's parsed that out now you'll notice it's changed here it's changed to a, a long sequence of numbers now that's an what they call an epoch number uh, that is the uh, the digital or in this case decimal rep representation of that particular time from the 1st of January 1970 uh, it's just a number um, you can check that uh, there are a number of epoch calculators just to check that's been passed correctly now if it wasn't being passed correctly you would get some sort of spurious uh, characters there and big error message uh, so in this case it's a really good example to show that I have passed that correctly uh, again just bear in mind I don't actually have any IP addresses in here. So again, it's the same mechanism to make sure that you would do the parsing out for IP address. And again, rather than it appearing as the actual IP address, it'll appear as the, uh, the, the number representation of that IP address as well. So just bear that in mind. If it's been parsed correctly, you'll, you'll see the actual number there. So uh, let me just double save that again. Let's, let's click through this to make sure everything's working, which it is. So we're good. So that's the parsing done. That's the processing. That's the, 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 the particular fields that we've associated. What I want to do now is I actually want to start associating things and, and start putting some data in there. So let's just start with some simple things. So uh, username. Well, we do want to map that. And it, actually, it's very simple. 
all I do is just drag and drop it across. So uh, I, I see my mapping, my, my label that is associated there, and it gives me a field to drop down. So I can uh, just drop that down. And we'll see all the available fields within the, uh, the structure within common event format. Again, it's documented in the manuals. I really do strongly recommend you go through that. So all I'm going to do is do some mapping. Now, uh, you'll notice that there will be no uh, attacker or target event mapping. You do not do the attacker and target mapping at the connector. It does it at the ESM level. So it's always source information. So in this case, I want the source username. Uh, in this particular example, I want the card number as well. So uh, I can actually make that the source user ID. Uh, the location. I could put that in there and I could call that the source host name. Uh, I can do the direction. Uh, now there is actually a particular field for that. So we want to do the direction here. Um, I don't really have a specific uh, use for that. So, you know, what I can do is let's just give this a, a, a flex uh, a flex field for us to use. So I can actually give it um, device custom string one. And what are we at? What are we missing? Well, we've got uh, the card number, we've got the location, we've got the username, uh, we do need the action. So let's have that mapped as well. And device action as well. So uh, what we don't have is the time. So what we can do is just drag and drop that across. Oh, I set the wrong thing there. Uh, what have I done? Source username, action, direction. Okay. And this was going to be what we call the end time. So the time at the event was actually generated. So if I can find it, end time. Um, You'll see that here is the event name is message because that wasn't actually mapped. Uh, what I will want to do though is I'll just edit that directly themselves myself. So if I just scroll up here, message isn't a mapped label here. That was just one that came in as default. So what I can do is I can start to use some specific uh, mapping features within a Flex Connected framework. So there is a whole bunch of operators we can use here. And if I flick back to my documentation again, again, you'll see them all defined in the documentation. There's a whole bunch of things about mapping and splits and processing and safe processing and uh, extracting and so on. Uh, in, in this example, I'm actually just going to do a very simple thing here uh, with regards to what we call string constant. So we're just going to put some text in there. So it, you'll notice it's underscore, underscore, lowercase s, capital C. That's just the naming construction that we use for the, the defining those. So if I go back here, I go string constant. Then I put a bracket and I put the text in there. So I will put in um, give it some text. So that's a generic name for the message. Uh, again, if I just want to save that and then hey presto, the mapping is there and the actual value is there. So we can see that physical access event, username, time, direction, location, action and card number all nicely mapped out. Uh, let me just save that again just to make sure. And again, we can step through to make sure everything's been mapped accordingly. So all we've done is just edit this particular text file down here to do that mapping and the processing of the tokens. It's very simple, very straightforward uh, from a processing point of view. Now, uh, what I haven't done is there's some additional fields I need to set there, but I'll cover that in the next video. Thank you very much.